Hello everyone, today we are going to be covering doing some text area auto resizing in a Rails 7 application. And before we get started, I just wanted to very quickly give a shout out to Import Maps for always working as expected. Uh, it couldn't find the package for this, so we're going to be using ES Build for this run instead, because uh, I've already wasted three minutes of my life that I'm never getting back, and uh, I'm just kind of full tilt about the whole uh, import maps thing. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this existing project and we're just going to do a Rails new, uh, well I guess I have to remove that, so we'll say rm-rf video and then we'll do a Rails new video and we'll use dash j for es build and dash c for bootstrap. I, I just, uh, I can't be bothered. Uh, so aside from my full tilt uh, entry into this video, what we're gonna be covering is auto resizing a text area. Now this is one of those things that like seems it, it should really just work out of the box, uh, but much to my chagrin, it does not. Uh, and it requires a little bit of JavaScript to make this work smoothly. Effectively what happens is you get a, uh, like a text input form. And if I open this page, uh, this is what it looks like if it's like auto resizing for you. Uh, and what happens is you'll just get something like this where, uh, you know, on the start, you have to like scroll through to find where the actual application starts. And it's just really not great. I'm actually gonna go ahead and start this timer because I missed it down here. So just like add 30 seconds to it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and CD into our video, run a code dot to open this up in VS Code. We'll create a basic scaffold just so that we can take a look at this. So I'll go ahead and run a Rails G scaffold. We'll create some posts with a title and a body of type text, just like that. We can then run a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate our database. All of that stuff's pretty simple. Now what we need to do is come into our gem file, scroll down to the bottom and add the Foreman gem from the GitHub page. I have to do this because I'm using Ruby 3.2. I've tried installing it locally. It doesn't seem to work. It's no big deal. Just a couple seconds lost each time. So we're going to go ahead and run a bundle command to add this. Now we do have a uh, bootstrap on this project. So let's go ahead and let's do a bundle uh, after we do a gem for simple underscore form just so that we can have the simple form uh, gem added to this project as well. Cause then we can do a, another bundle and then we can do a rails G simple underscore form colon install, oops, install space dash dash bootstrap, something like that. Uh, so that gives us a simple form. Cool. Now what I want to do uh, is run a uh, bin slash dev, which we can do because we're using ES build because that gives us a proc file for Foreman, which runs the web server, the JS and the CS, all very fancy. Let's come over to localhost port 3000. And then we have to change our routes and get back to the point of the video that I just had to stop recording. We can do a route to the post controller and the index action so that we can change the home page of our application here. Go ahead and hit enter on that. It looks good. I'm going to move this back over. And now we have this new post page. So let's come over to our app, our views, our layouts, and our application.html.erb. Let's do a dot container dot mt dash five to give this some padding so that everything comes over a little bit. That looks good. Let's close out of our application.html.erb file. So now we have this. Let's create a new post. We'll say test case and let's just copy some text from a lorem ipsum generator. Click copy, come over here, click paste. You'll see already it's not resizing. So this is like kind of mega cringe. Imagine you're the user trying to use an application like this. And this is how the uh, field looks when you when you first get to the page, right? Like it's kind of ugly. We'll click create post. It doesn't preserve our formatting, which isn't great, but that's not really the point of this video. The point is when I click edit, I don't want it to look like this. So to fix this, what we can actually do is, uh, well, first of all, I forgot to do the simple form stuff is probably why this looks so bad, but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to come in here uh, with this. We're going to stop the server, run a yarn add command. Oops, a yarn add command. And then if we come over to the stimulus component for the auto text resize, we can just copy this and paste in the stimulus dash text area dash auto grow. That'll add this package for us. We can then do a bin slash dev again. Of course, if you want to override this, you can just generate a stimulus controller and paste in this code instead of the default stimulus controller code. It'll work just fine. You do have to then attach the, the controller. We're going to be attaching this controller right here, which means we do have to come into our app JavaScript controllers index page. So let's come over here, come into app JavaScript controllers index. 
And in here, below the application import, we're going to import text area auto grow with the T and the A capitalized from stimulus dash text area dash auto grow. We then want to register this uh, controller below the hello controller, or I guess below your imports or whatever. And then this is just going to register text area dash auto grow, and it's going to go to the text area auto grow here. So we can go ahead and save that. Now the next thing it tells us to do is to uh, actually attach this controller. So let's come over to wherever this needs to be attached, which in our case is gonna be in the views and the posts and the forms.html. Dot erb and here we have this body we can do a comma with a data and in here we can do a controller and inside of that controller we need to use that same name which is text area dash auto grow so we'll just come over here and paste this in hit control s to save this come back over to our video and refresh our page and now you can see although we haven't set the width yet it is at least vertically uh, auto resizing this. Now this, it, again, doesn't look great because we're not resizing it, it horizontally, right? So to get it to resize horizontally, uh, well, what we can do is we can try this or we can just do what every good little researcher does, come over to chat GPT and go, how do I add uh, a full, uh, full width text area for the body uh, it is already vertically resizing. <laughs> and then we just paste in this code. And hopefully it'll figure out what you're supposed to do. Uh, let's see, it'll just tell us to add some rows probably somewhere at some point. Now yours is, might be a little bit slower just because I'm on the, the pay to win version of ChatGPT, but hopefully uh, it's suggesting a class of text area full width. Okay, let's try that. Come over to our body. We will use this because we're using Bootstrap. So we'll save this full width text area. So that's not working, of course. Uh, and then it's suggesting to just do a width of, of 100. I feel like that's a little bit cheating, but sure, let's come into our app, our assets, and our style sheets and our application.scss file. We will paste in this class, come over here and refresh. And there we go. So that seems to have worked. Now let's take a look at what this looks like when it's a full screened page. Uh, and I'd say this is about what we would expect uh, in terms of what this, this should look like. So now if a user comes in here and clicks edit, they'll actually get a full page worth of a text area. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the timer now. So again, like, you know, you could you could do this in a couple different ways. You could just add a style for with 100%. You could do this class, whatever. Uh, ChatGPT did it a little bit cleaner, um, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, so the reason why we do this is, it, it, if, I mean, first of all, it's just a lot easier to read, but also um, it is nice to have these things pre-built. Uh, it, you might be tempted to just pop in and create this JavaScript yourself to resize the text area. I can't imagine it's super involved, uh, but if you're working like maybe with some clients or something else, uh, sometimes you're going to be creating like tons of different applications and you know, you, you just need them to be up and running fairly quickly and having these packages pre-built, although you can do it yourself. Uh, you can save you quite a bit of time. And because it's something as simple as this, uh, you should be good uh, to just use this package. If it does break, you can always make your own uh, down the line. Um, but, you know, in general, this is going to be something where it's going to be pretty hard for this to actually break in a significant way, right? Hopefully it was interesting and hopefully I will see you in the next video.